Hi, thank you for joining me for seven minutes of seed. I'm so glad that you are here. I am Pastor Kate, and I come to you bringing seed, which is the Word of God, because that is what really matters, isn't it? The Word of God is seed to our heart, seed in our home, and when we are in the Word, we build faith, and that is what we are here doing. Now listen, if you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, I encourage you, subscribe to the 7-Minute Seed Podcast. Share it with moms. Share it with families. This will build each person up that listens to it, bringing the Word of God as a reality, a flourishing garden in our homes. Sounds kind of dorky, but it's true. All right, and you parents, you need time to reboot, to refresh, to seed your heart. We're in the world all day, every day. And if we don't take time to reboot, to clean out some stuff that doesn't belong there, then we're going to be hurting. That's just the truth. So check out rootbible.com slash reboot. It's an hour a day, live, interactive. It just resets your thinking to the word of God, refreshes you and reboots your system to be locked into the dominion on the kingdom of light and not uh, let your faith be chipped away at and allow unbelief to sneak in as, as we're in this world, allowing it to affect our thinking. We don't want that. And so that's what Root Reboot is all about. Now, seven minutes of seed today. It's going to be so good. Uh, unredeemed toddlers. <laughs> I've got one. I guess, I don't know, is four considered a toddler anymore? I'm not sure. But I tell you what, when dealing with an unredeemed toddler, there are solutions and they all are rooted in the Word of God. So let's get started. All right, seven minutes on the clock. Um, we were talking about in our last seven minute seed about Hebrews 11, 1, how we, faith um, becomes reality when we trust the word of God before we see it. That is what faith is. When we trust God with, at what he says and we walk it out, whether we see it, feel it, whether it's in tune with our five senses, and then, and then we will experience it in our five senses. It's the upside down kingdom maybe you've heard or knowing that a seed has everything in it it needs to be an apple tree, but you would look at that seed and say, no way, no way way. Well, Hebrews 11 one reminds us that the seed of the word of God becomes reality when we water it with faith and we dispel unbelief. And so we were going off our table talk, which at rootbible.com, when you register free for any semester, you have access to all those cool tools. And those are where I'm pulling the scriptures off for table talk, where you can bring it to life with your kids. Today, we're talking about John 10:27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now listen, I have an unredeemed toddler. I don't believe she's given her heart to the Lord yet genuinely. So in that matter, her soul nature is still in control. So guess what? She challenges my soul nature every single day. But now we could come at each other, soul nature to soul nature, and we could get nowhere. Except as the Bible says, fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath. It doesn't say mothers. I don't know why it doesn't say mothers, but it does. It says fathers don't. But I am tempted to provoke her to wrath as is she me. When our souls alone are combating each other, when our own flesh nature is combating each other. And I was really struggling the other day. I thought, I cannot break through to an unredeemed creature, Lord. And he goes, you do every day when you tell someone that's not saved about me. And I heard him so clearly. Why? Because I am his sheep. And I know his voice. And so when I am coming in, in these constant, and I'm telling you, we are in a season of constant moments with my four-year-old little girl. Um, it made um, the raising of my two boys seem like uh, cake <laughs> compared to her unredeemed soul. And it's wanting to buck up against um, correction rebuke, direction outside of what it wants to do, what her flesh nature, what her carnal nature wants to do. Why do I have to be obedient? Why do I have to listen to my parents? What does the word of God have to do with in my life? But I know the voice of God. And so I've got to tell her that's how I'm correcting her. Hey, 
kiddo. She needs to know this isn't my soul bucking up against her soul, just like I need to know it's not my soul bucking up against her soul because she will not have transformative change if it's my soul versus her soul. It just won't happen. So unless I am taking the voice of God and the word of God to bring correction to her, even before she has given her life to Christ and allowed that recreation to happen inside of her, remember there is no age limit on that in the word. There's not, but I don't believe that she has done it in a cognitive manner, believe in her heart and receive uh, Jesus. And, and she would tell you the same. So I'm dealing with an unredeemed creature right now who God loves, who God created, who he knew before she was in my womb. She has an eternal destiny and a purpose. And my purpose is to bring her to that eternal destiny and purpose by teaching her to hear his voice, leading her and guiding her by the word of God before she even knows it herself. For her to know that when mom is correcting her with the word, I'm doing it because I'm God's sheep. And because I belong to God, I listen to his voice so that I can bring her to the light, which is Christ himself, right? I'm not, that's not mom saying, you're annoying me. Uh, don't do this. I don't have time for you. That's not my soul saying, right? That's me taking a step back and going, okay, this is highly inconvenient right now. And I really want to react out of my flesh. But what this eternal being needs right in front of me right now is to know that I am God's child and I obey him no matter what with her, with myself, with the boys, with my spouse. And in our home, whether you understand it or not, we're going to honor God first. And this is what it looks like. And she's heard this so many times. She understands, you know, when, when we teach our kids to repent or to apologize and ask for forgiveness, we don't just teach them to go to their brother and say, or sister and say, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry is too easy. It's not repentance. It's not a change of heart. Repentance means burn it up so it'll never happen again. So we teach our kids that, you know, when you repent for a wrongdoing, it's not just saying, I'm sorry. It's asking that person for forgiveness. So we start that from a very young age. So when she offends me, uh, offends by the word, not offends by our feelings, not offends by our own thinking, when she does a wrong towards her, her siblings or us, we teach her that she doesn't just say, I'm sorry, that they, she then asks, will you forgive me? Meaning, I will not plan to do this again. I genuinely care that I hurt you, that I dishonored God, and I'm asking that you forgive me with the intent to not do this again. And so we teach our toddler that. Do you know how many times a day that I have to do that? I lose count. I can't even give you an idea because I don't want to stretch the truth, but it's a lot. But I know that that is just preparing the soil for the seed of salvation that when it comes in, none of the word of God will return void. Do you know what will return void? Words that come from my soul, words that come from mom's annoyed right now, or mom's tired right now, or mom's busy right now. All of those words are not going to prepare the soil of her heart for the seed of God, for her eternal destiny and purpose. But you know what will? the word of God, her knowing that I hear God's voice and I guide her vo by that. And God wants her to hear his voice too, knowing that I hear God's voice. And one of those ways I hear his voice is in his word. And so when we hurt our brother or we're sinning against our parents, then we ask for forgiveness. We don't just say, I'm sorry, because that's what the word says to do. So I encourage you today, your toddlers, that are driving you up a wall naturally. <laughs> I tell you, child of God, you can hear his voice. John 10, 27, you are his sheep. You know his voice. He knows you and he will lead you and you will follow him in how to discipline, how to guide, how to correct, how to build up your toddler in the things of the word of God before they've even become saved or received Christ Jesus for themselves, preparing them for a future rooted in Christ and ignited by his spirit. All right, check out rootbible.com slash reboot. Check out the podcast, Seven Minute Seeds, and we will see you for the next Seven Minute Seeds. Blessings to you and your home. Until next time.